Welcome to Riding Shotgun with Tupper. Thank you for coming along for a ride today. It's Tuesday. And uh, what's the date? November the 7th? Yep. Um, I just brought in some uh, firewood. I'm figuring after the Indiana game Saturday, supposed to be cold Friday and Saturday, get home Friday night, fire in the fireplace, ribeyes on the grill. I think that's the plan. And uh, But tomorrow, Wednesday, is uh, signing date. Um, I know Illinois is going to have a little deal. I think Dan Hartley from baseball is going to be there and Nancy Fay from women's hoops. And then Brad Underwood from men's hoops will be there. First time he can talk on the record about Io. And uh, that should be interesting. And um, he will not talk, I'm certain, about uh, Taylor Horton Tucker. I've never known a coach to talk about a player they didn't sign on signing date. That's just not done. Um, and um, and besides, he's not going to get into all that. Maybe sometime privately, um, you know, there might be a little more information exchange, but I don't expect that to happen. But it'd be fun to hear him talk about Iowa, and also fun to hear him talk about, interesting to hear him talk about, um, you know, what now, and um, see what his thoughts are regarding that. He'll also be talking about the season opener uh, Friday night at the State Farm Center against Southern. And, um, you know, those of us who were over in Charleston saw the Illinois Eastern uh, exhibition game. Uh, Brad talked about that. Gosh, he was great after the game. I mean, it's, you know, hey, media people judge this stuff by how much do you give us? You know, how much are you willing to talk about things? And a lot of times coaches after losses don't say anything. You know, we have a situation in football, and football coaches are very different than basketball coaches. They are really guarded. They are, you know, borderline or not even borderline paranoid a lot of the times. They just don't share a lot of information. Um, and that's certainly Lovey's M.O. We, we've all come to understand that's how it is. But um, Brad was terrific. And um, and um, so, you know, that, that game, interestingly, uh, was probably a great thing for this basketball team. Um, they were embarrassed. Um, and um, embarrassment is not the worst thing that can happen to you. You know, I don't know if you hey, we've all been embarrassed in our lives, right? You know, I don't know, did you have that day in school where the teacher called on you in front of the class and you hadn't read the assignment and you were completely unprepared and it was embarrassing? And usually what happens when you get embarrassed is you don't want it to happen again. And so you make a change. You do something different. You prepare. You, you read the lesson before you come to class. Um, in their case, I don't think it was so much preparation, although... Um, I am told that Brad predicted they would lose that game. Um, I, I was told he said something to his son, Tyler, uh, and said, I think we're going to lose by 20. Uh, he was not happy with the week of practice. Um, you know, he's been talking about this team's lack of vocal leadership. Um, and he has told this team, quiet teams lose. And he's trying to change that culture, that mindset. And he's got a, only five returning players, none of whom are natural vocal leaders. I would say the closest would be Tijon Lucas, who I think is trying. Ultimately, I think this job probably falls to Mark Smith. Uh, but Brad had said last week that he had backed off of that um, with Mark because he thought he had overloaded him with too much too soon and was just asking him to... You know, hey, just let's just worry about becoming a good college basketball player who's not afraid to make mistakes. And um, but but I think that became clear the other night that you know when things started to go south, um, there was nobody there to uh, to put the brakes on it. No no players, and it has to come from a player on the floor. I mean, it can come a little bit from Brad in timeouts, but he's not out there. Somebody's got to lay down the law and say enough. And um, and that's been a I wrote about it over the weekend. Maybe you read it. I, I think you should. I think people who are interested in the program should read that because I think it applies to football as well. Um, there's no reservoir of confidence. People that are playing on these teams 
have no idea what it's like to compete for a Big Ten title. They've never done it. They're, they've never played in an NCAA tournament game. Uh, you've got a boatload of freshmen who have never played in a college game, period. So um, this is stuff that's going to have to be developed. It takes time. Uh, Brad's going to have to nurture and encourage it and, and demand it. Um, but players are going to have to step up and accept it. And, um, and if they don't want to have the feeling... Uh, that they had at the end of that game the other night when they lost that exhibition over at Eastern uh, They'll start making some changes so that it won't happen I'm Trying to figure out what my dog is seeing in the woods. She's kind of going nuts um, So we'll talk about that stuff this, this month of November is just nuts. It's all November's the nuts month, you know, it's uh, I mean if you think about it globally Everything's going on, you know, right up and in, including the seventh game of the World Series, which is in November. But you got so you got the end of baseball, and already we've got all the baseball. I mean, this is going to be a crazy off season in baseball around here. You got the NBA rolling along, you got the NHL rolling along, you got the NFL rolling along, you got college football getting to the good stuff now, and now we've got college hoops, and everybody play not everybody, but nearly everybody plays Friday night, November the tenth, and then next week on Tuesday you have couple of marquee games of the season if you want to see a couple good games uh, check out that ESPN doubleheader from the United Center in Chicago I think it's Duke and Michigan State in the first game at six and then at 8 30 I think it's Kentucky and Kansas uh, but Illinois plays you know they played basketball Friday the exhibition with Eastern which was a late arranged game they played football Saturday at Purdue uh, I was over there yesterday for football we'll talk about that in a second uh, back over tomorrow for signing, Friday a basketball game, Saturday football game with Indiana, Sunday another basketball game with, uh, who do they play, Middle Tennessee, I think. And then uh, next week we do it all over again on the weekend with a Friday basketball game, uh, I think that's the DePaul game, and a Saturday football game at Ohio State, and then another basketball game on Saturday. It just goes that way in November until football runs its course, the last game November 25th, at home against Northwestern. So it's just a little bit crazy right now. Football yesterday, um, you know, really sad news. Hardy Nickerson's mom passed away unexpectedly out in California. He So he left, uh, he left for um, California and uh, will have to handle all the arrangements. I don't think there's anyone else out there in his family to do that. And he will be gone probably most of the week. Um, so I think obviously it makes sense that Lovey would become the de facto defensive coordinator. He was the D coordinator for the St. Louis Rams uh, in, when they won the NFC in 2001 and went to the Super Bowl. He's been a defensive coach his whole life. I don't, they don't, you know, there's no, this is his defense anyhow. So there's no issue there. I, th I think Hardy will be back before game day um, and maybe he just takes over or maybe they do it together or you know, whatever, but I don't think it's a huge issue. They're just a little shorthanded in that regard. They're way more shorthanded, though, on the injury front. And I'll tell you what, everybody's got injuries this time of year, so you don't get to lean on injuries too hard for an excuse. But with Illinois right now, it is borderline catastrophic. There were 18 players that did not play Saturday against Purdue because of injuries, and two others that played and then didn't finish the game because of injuries, including Cam Thomas, by the way, who uh, left and came to the locker room early. I was standing outside the locker room and there was still about three or four minutes to go in the game when he came coming in. And I think they just sent him off. I think he got banged up on that horse collar play. Um, and then um, uh, Malik Turner also did not finish the game. So. Um, I think they'll get a couple P and, and of those, by the way, of those 18, it's not just like fringe players. 13 of them have started. So um, I think they'll get a couple guys back this week on the defensive line. I think they're planning to get, don't get run over. What are you doing? What are you doing? Move. Um, <laughs> Kenyon Jackson, I think will be back. I think Tito, uh, Oda Nick Bo will be back. Um, I would hope, although I think it's less uh, certain, that linebacker Trey Watson will be back. He had his knee scoped. I don't know if he'll be back this week or not. Le but Lovey left the door open to that possibility. Maybe somebody else will get back. Uh, Cam Thomas, I think, would be fine. But um, 
and clearly they've ended this uh, quarterback shuffle. Uh, Cam Thomas is the quarterback now. Um, I do not expect us to see much or any of Jeff George Jr. unless there's an injury. And if there's an injury to Cam Thomas, then we'll see only Jeff George Jr. Um, but I think they've made the decision that he is uh, ready to be fed a larger proportion of the playbook. Um, you know what? He threw the ball pretty good. I, I went back and watched the tape of the game. He threw the ball very good. He put a number of balls in position to be caught, even though um, some of them were not. I thought Ricky Smalling had a chance to make a couple more. I thought uh, Malik Turner could have competed maybe a little harder for a ball. I, you know, and 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 they had a couple guys that ran the wrong route. So, um, you know, he's a long ways from where you need him to be, but he's improved since that first week and the, you know the good news is he threw 20 passes and none of them were the other team so um and he's clearly a, a talented runner i think i talked to garrick about him yesterday you know and i said you know he's going to pop one of those runs isn't he and he said next year his legs will be a lot stronger he's 190 pounds now he'll probably play at 200 205 next year uh, and be able to run out of some tackles that he's getting tripped up on right now he's going to he's going to make some dynamic runs and and he, just a little more of a space and he could go the distance he's plenty fast enough so um you know they, they've got to get past the part though it's like with the basketball team you know they get to the important moments of the game where you got to make a play to win the game they're in that game saturday they're down by six in the fourth quarter you can't make consecutive penalties and cam made a bad uh, a delay game penalty and um they went from where you could possibly pick up a first down, go in, take a touchdown, and take the lead in the game to, okay, well, let's at least hold our position here and get a field goal out of this and pull within three to backing themselves up and having to punt the ball and then failing to cover the punt inside the five. So, I mean, that that's a horrible sequence right there. And, um, and, and that's the kind of things that young teams do and that this team does and the teams without confidence and has never done it before, that's what they do. And, and one of these days you've got to rise up and make that play you know could that happen Saturday against Indiana yeah you know I don't I don't know that it will I don't necessarily expect it will but Indiana has a bunch of injuries now as well Indiana has lost all six of their Big Ten games um, I think they've been a little closer in some areas and so uh, you know we'll see what happens there but um, um, I, I am you know I'm trying to look I gotta watch these games so I gotta I gotta have something I can get you know, a little bit excited about watching and the continued development of some of these freshmen is one of those things. And now it becomes Cam Thomas. You know, what can Cam Thomas show in these remaining games? They really love that he's going to be a starting quarterback at Ohio State. They probably get mauled there. I get it. Uh, I wouldn't think Ohio State's in a real good mood nowadays after they got clobbered at Iowa. Um, but um, um, the chance for him to play there and, and be in that environment um, I think is invaluable going to next year. And right now, I mean, he's the leader going to next year. And I know some people, you know, uh, there'll be some naysayers that say, well, then they're screwed next year because he's no good. Well, let's see, you know. Um, and, and maybe he'll get beat out. Maybe uh, Coran Taylor comes in and just lights it up in training camp and, and he's the guy from the start. I don't know. And But that's what, that's what I'm going to be watching Saturday. And watch to see who might come back off of off of the injury list uh, they're down they're down four running backs you know Mike Epstein is out Rayvon Bonner is out Reggie Corbin didn't play the other day Dre Brown is out you know so Kendrick Foster a guy who couldn't get on the field he took all the snaps at running back and so they're they're just kind of in a mess there right now and they're down at least three wide receivers they're down four defensive backs um, you know so they just piece it together and try to win a game you know that would be a an enormous breakthrough for this team if they could could win a game and and this is their best opportunity of the three that remain you know I don't think they're going to win at Ohio State certainly and um, Northwestern is uh, on some kind of a magical little run here they've won three straight overtime games so anyhow that's what's going on and um, um, look forward to going over there tomorrow for signing day and see what Brad has to say about Io. Um, and what he has to say about their remaining scholarships and plans for those as well. I appreciate you coming along today. Uh, it's a pretty day. It's starting to get colder. There's no doubt about that. And um, 
Uh, I haven't decided what we're going to do once I wake up some morning and we have like seven inches of snow, although that didn't happen very often last winter. We had very, very little snow around here, so maybe it won't be in any kind of an issue at all. But uh, anyhow, thanks very much. Appreciate it a lot. And uh, we'll talk to you again next Tuesday. Thanks. Bye.